going on. Right. Um, show that 2 sine x equals 4 because x minus 1 over 10 x can be expressed in that form. Actually, this first part was really quite well done by most people. Um, it's just about demonstrating that you know the identities that we have for this. We have two identities. We have tan x is sine of the cos, or we have sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So, um, I think what might I do first? I think I might get the tan x up onto the, the top line first. So I'm going to multiply both sides by tan x before we do anything else. Okay. Remember there's a different thing here, when we're proving an identity, we work on the two sides separately, you know, work on one side and show it equals the other. But if it's an equation, then you can work on both sides at once and you can multiply by things and rearrange things however you normally would. Now we start to use the identity tan x is sine x over cos x. And that's just something that we need to have learned and remembered. It's on your poster on your bedroom wall. Um, we've got 2 sine squared x here. If we multiply through by the cos x, we've got 4 cos squared x minus cos x over on this side. So that was combining the, the left and multiplying both sides by cos x. The, the thing that we're heading towards is only in terms of cos x. At the moment, we've got both sine x and cos x. So we're going to rearrange this first, the left hand side here. Um, remember from the identity, if sine squared x plus cos squared x is always equal to 1, then sine squared x is 1 minus cos squared x. So this is two lots of 1 minus cos squared x is 4 cos squared x minus cos x. Now we're about rearranging this and tidying it up to get to where we want to be. If we take 2 cos squared x, add 2 cos squared x to both sides, take away the 2 from both sides, we end up looking like that, which is what we're supposed to look like. Um, hence, solve the equation. So for part two, notice that word hence again. Uh, well, I, it depends on how you feel about this. You might want to just make this into a nicer looking quadratic. I think I did that. I wrote C instead of having to write out the cos x at the time. Um, we could factorise this. If we don't immediately spot how to factorise it, we could do that nice little trick where you multiply the first and last things to get minus 12c squared. Can we think of two things that times to give minus 12 and add to give minus 1? Minus 4c and 3c. That would work, wouldn't it? So we, we put it together. 6c squared minus 4c plus 3c minus 2 is 0. Factorise the two things at time. Common factor there of 2c. 3c minus 2. Common factor here of 1. So we've got 3c minus 2. So we end up with 2c plus 1 times 3c minus 2. Remember 2c plus 1 and 3c minus 2 is the other bracket. Giving us c equals negative a half. <coughs> C equals two thirds, and it was cos x, so cos x is negative a half, and cos x is two over three. Shh. And uh, if, we, if we use the calculator to do inverse cosine of that, inverse cos of minus a half, your calculator says 120 degrees. 
if you want to use the cast diagram or however you want to decode this now, we've got 120. So it's in the in the, the ones where cos is negative, so the S and T quadrants. If that's 120, that is as well. So the first value we get is 120. The second value as we work our way around is 360 minus 120, so 240. That's the second value. If you take two thirds and do inverse cos of that, you get 48.19, I think. This time cos was positive. So on the cast diagram, we're going to mark it in those two quadrants, the positive cos ones. 48.19 there, 48.19 there. And that's going to give us, uh, well, 360 take that is 311.81. There's our two values. And then I think a nice way to end this would be to write our answers in ascending order. X is 48.2 degrees, 120 degrees, 240, 240. Degrees and let's just move this down actually. And finally, 311.8 degrees. Um, I, I always feel a little bit stuck about exactly what we want to give as our, um, as our final answers. Uh, it feels having written one of them to one decimal place, we should be consistent and write the other non exactly to that. Or you could write it to three significant figures, in which case you write that as 312, and you'll get the mark for even those. The, the mark scheme will always say for that, allow three significant figures or better. Um, remember, I know that we sometimes work in radians, sometimes degrees. What tells you that your answer has to be in degrees? In this question, um, what what says that has to be? It says values of x between zero and three hundred and sixty degrees. That's it. Values of x between zero and three hundred and sixty degrees. So we have to be consistent with that, and we must answer in the same form as the the masters. So there we go. That was it.